uh, as you are aware, we're going to vote this opinion beginning afternoon at 12.20, starting at 12.20. We're going to move forward in our agenda with a debate on eradicating homelessness, homelessness in the European Union. With us, we have two guests. We have the Commissioner for Jobs and Social Rights, Nicholas Schmidt, and Kjell Larsson, uh, the President of the European Federation of National Organizations Working with the Homeless. Thank you both for uh, accepting our invitation. It's a pleasure and an honor to have you. So, dear Commissioner Schmidt, uh, President Larsson, just two or three insights that I think would help us to get into uh, this debate. Um, this is a phenomenon that has been growing severely in the last few years. The idea we have is we have an increase of around 70% in the last 10 years. And too often there are some problems associated with this phenomenon of homelessness. Um, the people, homeless people are targets of violence, of social stigmatization. Many suffer poor health. Uh, lack of food, uh, lack of access to hygiene and health care. The COVID-19 pandemic brought more and more challenges to deal with this situation and more and more difficulties to these people. So we have elaborated our recommendations from the Committee of the Regions for effective housing, housing led um, measures to fight homelessness in the opinion we are about to adopt, drafted by Miko Altonen, is the one representing the Committee of the Regions in the European Platform on Combating Homelessness launched during the Portuguese presidency, which is a unique tool to bring together all levels of uh, governance. So European institutions, EU governments, local and regional authorities, civil society, working together in this um, platform is a good example of that. So um, rest assured that through its representation in this platform and in its uh, steering board, the Committee of the Regions will be a valuable ally and a strong advocate for the local and regional dimension. Affordable and sustainable housing must become a priority of Europe's recovery plan to make the European pillar of social rights a reality. Without uh, further delay, I would like to give the floor to uh, Commissioner uh, Nicholas Schmidt. You have the floor for 10 minutes, sir. Commissioner Schmidt, are you with us? You have to press the speak button. Hello? Yeah, you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Yes, we hear you. Welcome. Good morning. Yeah, good morning, everybody, and uh, good morning, uh, dear chair and uh, dear members. So I'm very happy to be back again uh, in the Committee of Regions, and I uh, would like to start by welcoming the work of the committee with the uh, own initiative opinion on homelessness. It sheds light on a social issue that is high in our EU agenda. I would uh, particularly uh, like to salute the rapporteur, Mr. Altonen, not only for the recommendations expressed in the opinion, but also for his active participation as a member of the steering board of the European Platform on Combating Homelessness. Before uh, zooming into the topic of today's discussion, I would like to say a few words on the successful enhanced cooperation between the Committee of Regions and my services, the DG Employment, launched last year. Within the preparation of the Porto Social Summit, committee, the committee, uh, committee of Region opinions shed the light on the role of local and regional authorities in designing and implementing employment and social policies. Regional disparities in the implementation are substantial in member states. The most recent editions of the Joint Deployment Report try to address this, integrating a regional dimension to the social scoreboard. We aim to continue this practice, and I hope also that we can count on the committee uh, to uh, achieve this. 
I particularly appreciate the active involvement of the committee in spe uh, specific policy areas and initiatives, such as the promotion of the Pact for Skills to local and regional authorities. Yesterday, you voted a resolution uh, on the 2022 work program of the European Commission and the committee uh, political priorities for 2022. I reiterate the commitment of my services to cooperate closely on key employment and social priorities. Coming back to the topic of today's discussion, the creation of the European platform on combating homelessness also benefited from feedback from SEDEC members. The adoption of the opinion is very timely. Only two days ago, we had our first plenary meeting of the platform after its launch in June. And I will come back with more details on the work program of this European initiative. But first, let me say a word on the challenge and the response that European Pillar of Social Rights Action Plan has put forward. As the rapporteur rightly highlights in the opinion, homelessness is an extreme form of social exclusion and is also a complex issue to tackle. This complexity is linked to the fact that homelessness has many drivers and many forms, as discussed in the opinion. The causes for homelessness might be structural, such as low income, precarious jobs, or institutional, such as young adults living in institutional care without proper support to housing, or personal, such as problems with addiction or mental health. The forms of homelessness include not only people living in the streets, perhaps the most visible form of homelessness, but also people sleeping in shelters or living in temporary accommodation for the homeless. Organizations working with the homeless also report hidden homelessness with persons staying with family or friends, not by choice, but for lack of housing solutions. While there is no official data on homelessness at the EU level, as estimates provided by civil society indicate that there has been a 70% increase in homeless, uh, homelessness rates over the past 10 years. And the pandemic placed additional pressure on people at risk of becoming homeless. During the lockdowns, vulnerable people and families living on low wages witnessed a dramatic drop in their income, making the payment of rent extremely difficult. Effective strategies to tackle homelessness require, therefore, a multidimensional approach and the cooperation of national, regional, and local authorities, with service providers in the design and implementation of policy measures and securing adequate funding. At EU level, access to housing and assistance to the homeless is a key social right enshrined in the European Pillar of Social Rights. The European Pillar of Social Rights Action Plan has put forward two initiatives to implement the right, Principle 19, on homelessness. The European Platform on Combating Homelessness an initiative to enhance cooperation at all levels of governance in the fight against uh, homelessness. And the Affordable Housing Initiative, which seeks to promote investment in uh, inclusive districts with a particular focus on the supply of social and affordable housing of good quality. The European Platform on Combating Homelessness was launched in June through the signature of the Lisbon Declaration during a conference hosted by the Portuguese presidency. And this initiative aims at supporting member states' authorities at all levels of governance and stakeholders in the adoption of efficient strategies to eradicate and not just manage this extreme form of social exclusion. Participant, uh, participants of the platform have committed to renewed efforts in fighting homelessness, notably by reinforcing prevention and implementing integrated housing-led approaches that seek to end and not simply manage homelessness. The platform will offer a forum for mutual learning and exchanges of good practices, with a focus on public policies and practices for efficient strategies to combat homelessness. And this commission will con contribute to this work with a policy toolkit on housing exclusion, which will be developed in collaboration with international organizations. 
In addition, to give visibility to best practices, a European award on combating homelessness will recognize innovative and sustainable projects or initiatives. Secondly, the work of the platform will also focus on improving evidence to underpin strategic planning and on developing a monitoring framework to measure progress. The Commission agrees with the rapporteur views in this context that member states and regional and local authorities should be encouraged to adopt a framework defining along the ethos classification. This type of, uh, typology of homelessness and housing exclusion was adopted at a consensus conference in 2010, 2010 by the European Commission and the Umbrella Organization of National Associations working with the homeless, uh, FEANSA. It has since been increasingly used as a reference framework in national and regional local initiatives. Comparable and recurrent data on homelessness would support member states to design effective policies. Thirdly, we will be promoting the use of relevant financial resources from national and EU budgets and supporting public authorities and stakeholders at national and local level mobilize the relevant EU funds that will be available in the next program, uh, programming period 21-27, including InvestEU. We are in a favorable context for investments in decent and affordable housing, including social housing, given the resources and instruments mobilized for the recovery and energy efficient renovations. Cohesion policy is a key lever for structural reforms and for addressing social and territorial inequalities. <clears throat> uh, uh, 24.2 billion from European Regional Fund have been uh, allocated to inclusive growth areas, including uh, social housing. The ERDF supported measures should facilitate access to the mainstream inclusive services, including social housing for marginalized groups including people with a migrant background, especially Roma people with, or people with disabilities, people who have become homeless. In addition, the ERDF investments in social housing infrastructure need to be based on solid strategic frameworks on poverty reduction and social inclusion. We are also seeking close cooperation between the ERDF and the European Social Fund Plus to reinforce integrated measures uh, and the ESF will continue to support the social inclusion and homeless people through various interventions. This include, for example, integrated support services, counseling in the context of anti-eviction programs, training of services providers working with the homeless, and social economy program, programs aimed at facilitating the integration of homeless uh, people. The Commission encourages member states to allocate further EU funds support in the 21-27 period to social housing. And regional and local authorities are also encouraged to build in their strategies social inclusion measures as well as social housing investments. The InvestEU social window also covers the financing of social infrastructure, including social housing and housing for the homeless people. With regard to strategies addressing homelessness, the Commission agrees with the rapporteur views that integrated housing-led approaches are the most efficient initiatives to tackle this issue. Integrated approaches combine immediate access to stable housing with a provision of enabling person-centered services to support the social inclusion or homeless persons and where, wherever possible their integration in the labor market. Prevention measures are also an important part of these approaches. For instance, by ensuring sufficient supply of affordable and social housing, supporting income or developing mediation services between landlords and tenants. The involvement of stakeholders in the design and implementation of strategies aiming at combating homelessness is essential. Let me finish by my intervention today by saying a few words on the work achieved so far on setting up the platform and the outlook for your action in the, new, uh, future, in the near future. The chair of the platform, uh, Yves Le Term, um, former Belgian Prime Minister, and the Commission presented the draft work program for the next two 
to three years at the first meeting of the platform two days ago. The draft program has been prepared by the steering board. The committee of the regions is, re is represented in the steering board by Mr. Miko Altonen, rapporteur of the opinion on homelessness, and Ms. Anna Karjalainen, chair of the Commission for Social Policy, Education, Employment, Research, and Culture. The platform is a collaborative effort. The Commission will undertake a number of activities in the context of the platform program and for which it will ensure financing. For instance, I think we can achieve concrete progress in data collection, highlighted as a key priority. The pol policy toolkit will also represent a step forward, translating the Lisbon Declaration principles into concrete guidance. Guidance supporting cities to the use of EU funding can also have a powerful leverage eff uh, effect. During the meeting, all members of the platform were invited to contribute with ideas and activities and take part in their implementation. And I welcome, in this context, the commitment made by the Committee of the Regions to support the activities of the platform through notably biannual conferences on local homeless policies, the organization of a meeting of the Commission for Social Policy, Education, Employment and Research and Culture dedicated to homelessness, and the work program will be adopted in February 2022. In this way, we can make the most out of the platform and our joint work. Now, again, thank you for your commitment, your preparatory work. A special thanks to the uh, rapporteur of this very, very uh, fundamental report. And I'm looking forward to our exchanges today and to our future collaboration with the Committee of the Regions to bring the region and local level into the design of strategies and funding solutions and to put an end to homelessness, hopefully by 2030, but certainly to reduce it dramatically by that date. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, we invite you to stay with us during the exchange that's going to follow. Uh, and now it is my pleasure to give the floor to Mr. Kiel Larsson. He's the president of the European Federation of National Organizations Working with the Homelessness. Mr. Larsson, you have the floor for five minutes. You have the floor. Mr. Larsson, you have to press the speak button. Do you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Good morning and welcome. Ah, thank you very much. Still after nearly two years, it's difficult to remember to press the speak button. Thank you. Thank you, Chair, and thank you very much for the invitation here today. I realize the problem to be the speaker of the Nicholas Schmidt here, who are devoted to the homeless issue and what you have been said also before. Some things uh, that I wanted to say has already been said, but some things need to be on repeat, of course. Uh, when I read the uh, Committee of Regions' uh, opinion on eradicating homelessness in these 30 points, I feel very confident, as the president of FIANSA, that the knowledge about homelessness are there. The suggestion for EU actions integrated in the Committee of Regions' opinion could easily be fed into the work of this uh, newly established uh, EU platform for combating homelessness. Because local, regional authorities are the key stakeholders in the fight against homelessness. It's very important that they are involved in any relevant European initiative, I think. And uh, they should be easy enough as the platform is currently discussing its work program for the years to come. And as Nicola said, also the first plenary meeting of the platform took place now on, on Tuesday and it was agreed to finalize and launch the work program at a high level event on homelessness during the French presidency of the EU. We in FIANSA accept with gratitude the suggestions of the Committee of Regions in the opinion that FIANSA should play an important role in the management, 
and coordination of the platform. Because we believe in all modesty that we have the necessary knowledge and experience and networks to take on this role, as we are the only European organization also exclusively working on homelessness. And we have and we are a key player at the EU level also. We also welcome in particular the commitment of the Committee of Regions to organize on a regular basis a European event on local homelessness policies. You can count on Fianza to turn this into a flagship event of the platform. Well, as we have said this many times, homelessness is an urgent issue. We have no conclusive data on the impact also of the corona crisis on, and the scale and nature of homelessness. But most experts expect numbers to further increase. This is a time, this at the time that the at risk of poverty and social exclusion rate has remained largely stable at the EU level. Well, there is clearly something happening at the very bottom end of society, which is insufficiently captured by general social trends. There is a growing understanding that managing homelessness in the shelter system is ineffective and that we have to have housing-led, housing-first approach to homelessness and more attention to targeted prevention. But there is still some way to go to turn this understanding in actual policy change and visible progress on the ground. An increasing number of the member states committed themselves to end homelessness by 2030. And this target has also been integrated into the Lisbon De Declaration, which underpins the EU platform on homelessness, and which has been signed, has been said now, with all the 27 EU member states. And all EU institutions and a wide range of European NGOs and social partners. The question remains whether solving homelessness by 2030 is a possible, uh, is a relevant question. But even if it's not realistic, it is important to change the paradigm of policy and service intervention and work towards ending homelessness at some point in the not too distant future. And finally, I will keep this short because I see that the time's running out. I must say that the Committee of Regions' opinion here now on homelessness is so very close to Fianza, Fianza's opinion on homelessness. So that is why I think we should also work more together uh, therefore, I invite the Committee of Regions here and now to consider applying for membership in FIANSA. So, welcome to FIANSA, I will say. So, thank you very much for me and for FIANSA. Thank you, Mr. Larson. That is a good challenge, though. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to open the debate. We're going to start by the, mem the representative representatives of the political families. Uh, we invite Mr. Larson to stay with us, of course. And I uh, will now give the floor for two minutes to our colleague Borboli, Xaba Borboli. You have the floor, two minutes. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, dear Commissioner. Uh, dear Mr. Mr. Larson, uh, first of all, I wish to congratulate you for working with uh, passion, uh, commitment and humanity on this field. It uh, requires strong motivation, and especially uh, for those who uh, work every day in the stress, uh, trying to bring comfort, food, uh, a word of encouragement and compassion. Uh, the members of the EPP group greatly appreciate the approach of the European Commission uh, aiming at uh, finding uh, credible and handy solutions in the homelessness. Uh, we believe in solidarity, but also in prevention, especially to m mark uh, a decisive uh, full stop uh, to the unacceptable inhuman phenomenon of homeless children in the school age. Yes, we agree that homelessness is against human rights. And yes, uh, we agree that the living standards, especially in uh, big cities in times of COVID, have uh, greatly deteriorated. In light of this, let me propose some next extra inputs to the debate. 
First, as Christian Democrats, we believe in the concept of individual um, responsibility. Homeless people, especially uh, adults, who are already on the streets should receive guidance on uh, how to get out of, of such extreme condition and monitor it to, to check progress. Uh, public authorities, uh, especially local ones, can greatly help to reach this objective in partnership with the non-governmental partners. Uh, perhaps uh, Mr. Larson can give us examples if this is already the case. Second, in the housing first approach, uh, Mr. Schmidt, uh, the natural question that comes to my mind is, then what? Using, uh, housing uh, is crucial. We agree with that, but it must be designed as a part of a much broader uh, mindset with the aim to regain uh, comfortable and sustainable living conditions for those who are in great distress. Seek for employment and reskilling, if necessary, should be the first uh, prerequisites uh, to be reached. I am certain that you cannot disagree with this, but I'd like to ask you for your considered housing method, a final goal rather than the stranding point. Thank you very much for your attention and good work ahead. Muito obrigado. Thank you, thank you. Uh, e agora passo a palavra ao nosso colega Ricardo Rio. Tem a palavra, dois minutos. Good morning, Chair. Good morning, Mr. Commissioner, Mr. Larson. On behalf of the XPG Group, I wish to thank you for co-organizing this debate and welcome to the Committee of the Regions. In the spirit of the Porto Social Summit held during the Portuguese presidency this year and as established by the EU Strategic Agenda 2019-2024, the Committee of the Regions is ready to do its part to deepening the implementation of the European Pillar of Social Rights directly at the very heart of our constituencies. The open letter concerning European commitment to end homelessness at the Porto Social Summit was supported by 134 MEPs, the mayors and vice mayors of 32 large European cities, 10 of the biggest European social NGOs, 22 members of the Committee of the Regions, and further 41 representatives at local, regional, or national level. The subsequent recognition of homelessness as an important social issue that is in, uh, on the European agenda is an important step forward, and the widely supported letter has been instrumental in achieving this and showing that there is a strong demand for EU action on homelessness. Dear Commissioner, I wish to quote something you recently said. When euros spent in prevention, combating poverty at its roots will save us thousands of euros in the remedial action. It is investment in people, in their hopes and talents. We cannot agree more. Prevention is the key to the success of actions aiming at eradicating poor homelessness. Prevention is a matter of solidarity and equality, but also of multi-level governance. And where prevention starts, it's in our local communities. It is by listening to the voices and needs of the most vulnerable families living in our constituencies that we can adapt our policies. And to do so, regional and local authorities need sufficient resources, especially in view of the implementation of the Housing First Principle, as we have been defending in the Urban Roof Project in which Braga, my city, participates. It costs not only money, but also solid relations with the private sector that should, in principle, co-finance projects on the ground with an integrated approach that involves economic, health, educational, and social initiatives. Not only that, we need a vision. We need to come with ideas and means to be effective and credible in front of our key partners in this challenge, establishing solid relations with churches, associations, non-governmental organizations mainly. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Muito obrigado. Ladies and gentlemen, I will now give the floor to Mr. Altonen, Altonen for four minutes. Kiitos. Arvoisa komissaari, arvoisa Fianzan puheenjohtaja, arvoisat kollegat. Vesryhmän puolesta haluan ilmaista täyden tukeni arvokkaalle työllenne. It should be on. Up. Now, okay. Now, better. Yeah. Okay, great. Let's start again. Up. Arvoisa komissaari, arvoisa Fianzan puheenjohtaja, arvoisat kollegat. Vesryhmän puolesta haluan ilmaista täyden tukeni arvokkaalle työllinen asunnottomuuden poistamiseksi Euroopasta vuosikymmenen loppuun mennessä. Laaja yksimielisyys vallitsee siitä, että tähän kasvavaan ongelmaan on puututtava kaikissa jäsenvaltioissa. Asunnottomuus loukkaa ihmisoikeuksia ja jokaisella tulee olla oikeus omaan kotiin. Paikallis- ja aluetason vaaleilla valitut poliitikot ovat eturintamassa torjumassa asunnottomuutta 
joka on, jolla on tuhoisa vaikutus yksilöihin ja laajempaan yhteiskuntarakenteeseen. Tämä on antanut aihetta oma-aloitteisen lausunnon laatimiseen, jonka Euroopan alueiden komitea toivottavasti tänään myöhemmin hyväksyy. Asunto ensin ja lähestymistavan mukainen majoitusturva on oikeus, jonka edellytyksenä ei voi olla käyttäytyminen tai erityisten henkilökohtaisten tavoitteiden saavuttaminen. Tämän lisäksi PES-ryhmä on myös vahvasti sitä mieltä, että tarvitaan kestäviä ja yksilöllisiä sosiaalitukipalveluita, jotta voidaan käsitellä niitä henkilökohtaisia ongelmia, jotka ovat johtaneet tai jotka voivat johtaa asunnottomuuteen. Samaan aikaan on riittävästi näyttää siitä, että asunnottomuuden hallinta pitkällä aikavälillä vain tilapaismajoituksen kautta on tehotonta ja kallista. On myös selvää, että ongelmaa ei poisteta kriminalisoimalla ja rankaisemalla kadulla nukkuvia. Siksi kehotamme tällaisia toimenpiteitä toteuttavia paikallis- ja alueviranomaisia lopettamaan toimenpiteet välittömästi, koska ne ovat sekä tehottomia että sosiaalisesti polarisoivia. Jotta paikallis- ja alueviranomaiset voivat, torjua, voivat tarjota tehokkaita asumislähtöisiä ratkaisuja, heillä on oltava käytettävissä riittävä rahoitus ja mahdollisuus hyödyntää EU-rahoitusta asunnottomuuden torjumiseksi, erityisesti ESR Plussaa, EAKR ja elpymis- ja palautumistukivälinettä. Tarvitsemme myös vahvempaa kansainvälistä yhteistyötä kaupunkien ja paikallis- ja alueviranomaisten välille hyödyntämällä URBAT ja Open Innovative Actions-ohjelmien puitteissa tehtyä asunnottomuutta koskevaa työtä. Asunnottomuuden torjumunnan eurooppalainen foorumi, jossa minulla on kunnia edustaa Euroopan alueiden komitea, voisi auttaa tässä asiassa. Se voisi myös työstää kipeästi kaivattuja eurooppalaisia tilastoja ja asunnottomuuden eurooppalaista määritelmää. Lopuksi pyydän komissaari Smithia tukemaan sitä, että asunnottomuuteen kiinnitetään enemmän huomiota EU-ohjausjaksossa ja esittämään ehdotuksen asunnottomuutta koskeviksi maakohtaisiksi, maakohtaisiksi suosituksiksi jäsenvaltioille, joissa asunnottomuudesta on tullut sosiaalinen hätätila. Kiitos. Thank you. I give the floor now to our colleague Fini, Kate Fini, for three minutes. Thank you. Um... President, and I'd like to thank the Commissioner and Mr Larson for joining us this morning. Um, in Ireland, we are currently experiencing a housing crisis with rising house and rental costs, and this is most acutely felt in Dublin, including Dunleary Rathdown, my own council area, which has the highest average house prices in the country. And while the housing crisis presents itself to itself most visibly through homelessness. This is not the only issue arising from it, and indeed the Commissioner covered many of the issues in his own speech. In my own um, local authority, we work with partners across the Dublin region on our homeless strategy and have found the Housing First programme to have um, very good success rates with an almost 87% ten tenancy retention rate from those who took part in the programme. And this shows that if we want to be truly successful in eradicating homelessness, we need to take a holistic approach um, in recognising and addressing all of the complex needs of people experiencing homelessness. In Dublin at the moment, there are 752 families in emergency accommodation placements and 3,019 single people in emergency accommodation placements. This includes people in shelters, family hubs, and indeed hotels and B&Bs. And it doesn't even capture the full picture, as we find in practice, that there are people who would rather stay in unstable and unsuitable accommodation than go into the emergency shelters, and they are therefore not recorded in official data. Um, data also shows a changing profile of homelessness in Ireland with an increasing number of women presenting as homeless. And I think in that regard it's striking that we have um, a predominantly male speakers list here this morning and women's voices need to be part of this debate at every level and as an organisation we should work to ensure that that happens. Um, it was noted in a commission report in 2019 that Ireland had serious gaps in the definition and counting of the extent of homelessness and housing exclusion. And I would beggar that we are not alone in this. And that makes it all the more important when we are agreeing wording on an EU-wide definition of homelessness, that it is broad enough to capture all of the people who are currently falling outside of the system so that we can ensure that they get the supports that they need. Finally, at our last plenary session, 
we agreed an opinion on the LGBTIQ equality strategy, which noted that the limited data available shows that 25 to 40 per cent of young people experiencing homelessness identify as LGBTIQ. We need to do more work in this area, both to gather adequate data and to work with these young people who are currently experiencing the most extreme form of social exclusion. And we will be grateful um, for the Commissioner's assistance in this regard. Thank you. Thank you. Now I give the floor to Zibilski, Cesare Zibilski. You have the floor for two and a half minutes. Panie Przewodniczący, Panie Komisarzu, koleżanki i koledzy. Problem bezdomności to problem międzynarodowy, ponieważ bezdomni w Sofii, Lwowa czy Mińska są obecni na dworcach i starówkach polskich miast, a polscy bezdomni pojawiają się w Berlinie, Paryżu, Rzymie czy Brukseli. Problem bezdomności, bezdomności i wykluczenia mieszkaniowego jest jednym z problemów społecznych także Dolnego Śląska, który reprezentuje. Według polskiego systemu prawnego za kwestię związaną z bezdomnością odpowiadają administracja gminna na wyższym poziomie rządowa. To zagadnienie nie znajduje się w kompetencji marszałków województw. Marszałkowie mają jednak pieczę nad funduszami unijnymi. Przez ostatnie 7 lat środków regionalnego programu operacyjnego zrealizowano kilka projektów służących aktywizacji tej grupy i przeciwdziałaniu skutkom ich wykluczenia. Były to działania służące głównie podejmowaniu zatrudnienia, rozwijania kompetencji społecznych i zawodowych. Organizacje pozarządowe zajmujące się pomocą osobom bezdomnym w współpracy z samorządem zrealizowały cztery projekty na łączną kwotę ponad 2 milionów euro. Pokazuje to, jak bardzo istotny społeczny jest ten temat. Dlatego tak ważna jest wysokość środków przeznaczonych przez Unię Europejską na to zagadnienie. Osoby bezdomne stanowią grupę, którą najtrudniej aktywizować i rozwiązywać ich problemy, ponieważ oprócz braku miejsca zamieszkania dotyka ich szereg różnych problemów społecznych, w tym bezrobocie, zadłużenia komornicze, uzależnienia, problemy zdrowotne, zaburzenia psychiczne. W przeciwdziałaniu bezdomności istotne znaczenie ma większa dostępność niedrogich mieszkań socjalnych oraz komunalnych. Programy mieszkaniowe dla osób w trudniejszej sytuacji ekonomicznej, na przykład seniorów, rodzin z osobami niepełnosprawnymi. Dziękuję. Thank you. Now I give the floor to Declan McDonald. You have the floor for two minutes. Dear Commissioner, dear Mr. Lawrenson, dear colleagues, we are talking about a very serious issue on homelessness. An over-reliance on the increasingly unaffordable private rental market and a shortage of new housing units are key factors contributing to homelessness. In my city of Galway alone, there were 1,157 homeless people regist registered in 2020, of which 350 were children. In addition, around 4,500 families are on the waiting list for council housing at this time. Since the lifting of the N N National Wide Monitorium on Evictions in Ireland, which was introduced as a COVID measure, there has been increased, an increase in the number of families entering homelessness, which nine, with a 9.5 increase in the number of people in emergency accommodation in Galway in the first three months of this year. <coughs> when is already upon us, and these numbers are only likely to get worse. The cold weather response, which is a humanitarian response targeted at rough sleepers, came into operation earlier this month. But what we must remember is that behind these statistics there are real people experiencing tra trauma and distress. This is why we need to continue to build both transient and permanent housing, but also focus on the human dimension. And as policymakers do more to forge trust between homeless people and the assistance groups. Collaboration and innovation are key words in the area of homeless service delivery. Our city, Galway, used emergency powers to support the delivery of 15 modular homes to be delivered in the city. This project, which has been run by Peter McVeerty Trust, is in operation since May 2020 
and it has afforded a service delivery that focuses on supporting persons into their long-term tenancies. In Galway, we have embraced the national policy of Housing First, an international evidence-based model, which I understand is working well in countries such as Finland, whereby street homelessness is almost eradicated as a result. To date, there are 20 ter tenancies in place, and this cross-departmental approach from health, housing, addiction and mental health sector is welcome and long overdue as a model of interagency cooperation. It is only by working together with local and regional governments that we can finally end homelessness. Coromina Magoth, thank you. Thank you. Now the floor goes to our colleague Dan Boyle for two minutes. Thank you, Chair, and thank the Commissioner and Mr. Larson for their contributions. Uh, the issue of homelessness is multifactorial, uh, and the economic basis uh, of pursuing policies whereby uh, the, the cost of renting and, uh, if possible, purchase of accommodation is beyond many people, is the pursuit of market-led policies, and the role of local and regional governments should be to have as many social interventions as possible uh, in the provision of housing for our citizens. Uh, of course, being multifactorial, uh, the issues uh, of each homeless person and each homeless family is unique. Uh, we have to take into account the, the issues that go beyond economics, uh, the issues of mental health, the issues of addiction, uh, the need for uh, health workers, social workers, addiction counsellors uh, to be available in greater numbers and to be uh, working in, in areas where, where individuals can be helped. Uh, and in this regard, I, I believe the role uh, of the Committee of the Regions should be to identify best practice and encourage it uh, throughout all our local and regional government structures. It's good that the opinion uh, that's been provided is from Finland and the experience of Helsinki because uh, thought has been given, resources have been provided, uh, and results are being achieved that I believe can be achieved throughout all our local and regional authorities. Uh, we, we need to take the issue of homelessness seriously, remove it from the periphery, uh, and, and not uh, indulge in, in cliches in, in saying that it's an issue that we live with uh, and uh, accept to a, a certain extent. Uh, we are better than that. Our citizens deserve better than that. Uh, and while we pursue issues that are, are uh, more uh, esoteric uh, in, in the political value they may give us as, as uh, elected representatives, the fact that homelessness exists at all is a shame on all of us in our local communities and throughout the continent of Europe. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Now, we have two more interventions, and then we'll go to uh, Mr. Larson and Mr. Schmidt. But right now, I will give the floor to our colleague Zitelli Ferrari for one minute. You have the floor for one minute. Gracias, señor presidente. Desde la región de Murcia, queremos agradecer al comisario Schmidt y al señor Larson por acompañarnos hoy en este debate que consideramos tan necesario. El drama de las personas sin hogar es probablemente una de las manifestaciones más graves de exclusión social en Europa y requiere el firme compromiso de todas las administraciones, una coordinación eficaz a todos los niveles de gobierno y planes integrales de actuación. Estos planes deberían contemplar tres enfoques principales. Primero, la prevención con modelos de desarrollo social, laboral y de vivienda que faciliten la integración social, especialmente de las personas y colectivos sociales más vulnerables. Segundo, la actuación inmediata a las personas que se encuentran sin hogar, ofreciendo todo lo necesario para unas condiciones de vida dignas. Y por último, los procesos de acompañamiento social. Para todo ello tenemos la oportunidad, la obligación y la responsabilidad de coordinar todas las fuentes de financiación disponibles al servicio de las personas sin hogar, tanto del plan de recuperación y resiliencia como el de la política de cohesión. Muchas gracias, señor presidente. Thank you. Now the floor goes to our colleague, Whoop. Gary Whoop, you have the floor for one minute. Ich danke dem Berichterstatter für seine exzellente Arbeit an diesem wichtigen sozialen Thema. Ich begrüße aus Berliner Sicht auch die Schaffung der europäischen Plattform. Es ist wichtig, diesen Austausch zu haben und die gemeinsamen Anstrengungen zu entwickeln. Ich danke da auch dem Engagement des Kommissars Schmidt in dieser Angelegenheit. Wir haben in Berlin einen Masterplan entwickelt, der auf den Prinzipien von Housing First beruht. Da bringen wir die Akteure der verschiedenen Ebenen zusammen, 
koordinieren die Arbeit in unserer dreieinhalb Millionen Einwohnermetropole und versuchen auch die sehr unterschiedlichen Lebensbedingungen von Obdachlosen zu berücksichtigen und in diese Projekte einfließen zu lassen. Wir nutzen auch 11 Millionen Euro allein aus den REACT-EU-Mitteln, die wir erhalten haben, zusätzlich für Projekte der Wohnungslosenhilfe. Wir haben hier regelmäßigen Austausch organisiert in Strategiekonferenzen. Kommissar Schmidt hatte Gelegenheit, im Mai dieses Jahres auch an einer solchen Konferenz teilzunehmen. Ich hoffe, dass dieser Austausch dazu führt, dass wir unsere Ziele gemeinsam erreichen werden. Herzlichen Dank. Thank you. Now I don't have any more requests for the floor. I will give the floor to Mr. Larsen for final remarks for three minutes. Mr. Larsen, if you want to add something, you have the floor for three minutes to add final remarks. Don't forget to push the speak button. Well, thank you very much, Chair. I don't have actually so many remarks because I think everything that's been, uh, you know, everything has been said. You don't have to say anything more now. Everybody knows that we want to eradicate homelessness and we know a very good, powerful uh, tool that we have to to eradicate homelessness with, and that's housing-led and housing-first solutions. So, I would be uh, like encourage all 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 countries and, uh, and all uh, uh, regions uh, that listening now on local and regional level that you should. You know, like try to establish some knowledge and and about housing solutions, about housing led, housing first, how to work with that because it's cost effective and it's a very good way to approach and it gives high quality for the service user. I don't know what else to say actually because everything has been said here. So I, I think I'll stop there. If there's any question, I could easily answer them in that case. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Larson. We invite you to stay with us to the final. We have a final video. I think you know that final video on this issue that we would like you also to, to share with us. Now I will give the floor for final remarks and to conclude this point of our agenda to Commissioner for Jobs and Social Rights, Nicholas Schmidt. You have the floor for five minutes. Thank you very much, uh, Chair. So first, uh, I want to thank uh, the Committee of Regions, but uh, especially all, all the members who have, uh, uh, who have uh, presented their views on this issue. And I think this shows that the Committee of Regions, being the uh, uh, representatives of uh, your, our local and regional committee, have a central, essential role to play in our strategy against homeless. This is absolutely indispensable. And I thank you also for investing so much in this, uh, in this topic. My second remark is uh, on... Uh, uh, how we uh, we should approach this. And I think everybody shared that view that uh, there is only a comprehensive approach which uh, allows us uh, to uh, reduce dramatically homelessness uh, in a reasonable time frame. And when we say um, a comprehensive approach, this is uh, fighting homelessness is, uh, and is, is part of our combating uh, poverty. We have an ambitious, rather ambitious objective uh, uh, set in, uh, in our uh, Porto Action Plan, reducing poverty, and in uh, this uh, target, homelessness should be one of our priorities. So a comprehensive approach means also that certainly housing first is the right approach. It's uh, the approach which uh, we have now to extend and uh, I think the, uh, our Finnish friends have shown how efficient it is, and especially also the rapporteur, uh, Mr. Altonen, who is from Finland, has given us a lot of good uh, arguments. But Housing First is also a comprehensive approach. We have to uh, reinforce uh, social services because without good social services in the diff different areas and the role of social workers were mentioned, we will not be able 
to uh, to combat efficiently um, efficiently homelessness. I fully agree that the uh, solutions of shelters are ineffective. These are just uh, solutions for urgent situations, but in the longer term, they are not the solution. Last comment on the first. Yes, now homelessness is strongly anchored in our European agenda. And uh, I think also the committee is playing in that respect an important role. I look forward for the French presidency and the big conference they organize on this topic. And I hope that we can have uh, have made already progress on the different issues. How uh, we have to deal uh, at the level of the European semester. I agree. It has been also an element in the European semester, especially in the context of poverty, child poverty, housing. And that's my last point. Housing is a key issue. Housing is one of the causes of homelessness. And here I think uh, there is a need all over Europe, all over our member states, all over our regional and local uh, um, uh, authorities uh, to invest more in affordable housing. Uh, if housing is, and it is, according to our own principles, according to UN principles, a human right, then we have really to invest to implement this human right. It's not just a human right on paper. It's a human right in reality. And this is a, an economic, this is a social, and it is obviously also a financial issue. And so we have to make sure that uh, the housing markets all over Europe are finding a new balance because housing has become not just the fulfillment of a human right, it has become mainly a speculative object. And we have to restore some balance on these markets. And this is only possible by investing in affordable housing. And here, uh, local authorities play also a very important role. So thank you.